we will now begin with gradient operator and gradient operation Let us consider partial derivative del del x. This is a scalar operator. Let us multiply it with unit vector x cap. So we have a vector operator. Similarly, we can form vector operators with y as well as with z. And if we add them, we get a vector operator which is defined as gradient operator and it is denoted by this symbol. So this is the gradient operator. It is also called nabla operator or del operator or simply grad. The arrow present atop this inverted triangle means that it is a vector operator. We now mention the various properties which this vector operator has as well as study its significance. So the important points are grad operates on a scalar. Say phi to produce a vector. So, this grad operating upon phi will give us a vector and let us call that vector A vector. So, this is a scalar and grad takes us from a scalar field to a vector field. So, let us write this. The second point to note is that if we write grad of a vector then that has no meaning. So we should never think of writing in this way. So grad always operates upon a scalar and we get a vector. So grad is denoted by an inverted triangle with an arrow over it. The scalar field here say is phi, phi field which is a function of vector r and upon taking grad of phi we end up with a vector field and say the vector field is A and being a vector it will have a magnitude and it will have a direction. Let us call it n hat. So this is the magnitude. Now this vector a is as stated grad of phi. So the magnitude will be modulus of grad phi. This is a and the direction will be n hat which is therefore or written in terms of vector a it will be a by a. Our task is therefore now to find the magnitude what does it actually mean 
and to find the direction in which direction does it point. We can write this also as A is grad phi mod which we have written and the direction is n hat. Let us express the directional derivative in terms of gradient operator. Let us consider a region of space. This is the origin and this is a representative point. Coordinates are x, y and z. This is vector r and each and every point has a psi. So psi is a function of x, y, z or psi is a function of vector r. As we move around this region, that is as we change from x to x plus dx, y to y plus dy, z to z plus dz, obviously psi will change from psi to psi plus d psi. Now if x changes only, then what will be the change in psi? It will be del psi del x dx. If we move along y only, then what will be the change in psi? It will be del psi del y dy. Here dx being the amount of movement along x and dy being the amount of movement along y. Similarly, if we move along z by an amount dz then how will psi be affected? So psi will undergo a change of this amount and if we make all the changes simultaneously then how will psi be affected? So psi will suffer this amount of change and it will be d psi and it will be the sum of all the individual changes. And specifically, if we move along R cap, then the rate of change of psi will be d psi dr, which is called the directional derivative. And the expression of which follows from here to be We wish to bring grad into the picture. In other words, in this right hand side, we have to push in this operator, which involves x cap. And we do not have any x cap in this expression. So let us put it by force. So let us write x cap del del x psi. And there is dx dr here. But we note that since there is no x cap here, we have to remove its effect. And this can be done by taking a dot with x cap. So that x cap dot x cap is 1 and we have this expression remaining as before. And similarly, this y cap can be pushed into the second term by writing it in this way and we note that y cap dot y cap is 1 and similarly let us push in z cap from this expression let us take x cap del del x plus y cap del del y 
प्लस जेड कैप डेल डेल जेड कॉमन एंड ईच ऑफ दिस टर्म ऑपरेट्स ऑन शाई सो यू हैव टू पुट शाई हियर एंड देन ईच ऑफ दिस टर्म्स इज फॉलोड बाय अ डॉट and then x cap dot x cap so we have to write it x cap dx dr plus y cap dot y cap so we have y cap here dot y cap dy dr z cap dot z cap so z cap dot z cap dz dr writing in this way is perfectly all right because x cap dot y cap is zero and x cap dot z cap is zero and similarly y cap dot x cap and y cap dot z cap are zero so are z cap dot x cap and z cap dot y cap and we are left only with x cap dot x cap which gives us the first term y cap dot y cap which gives us the second term and z cap dot z cap which gives us the third term now this is nothing but grand now this quantity is gradient operator psi and let us take dr common in the denominator so that in the numerator we have x cap dx plus y cap dy plus z cap dz and this is vector dr and vector dr divided by the modulus of vector dr is simply r cap this is r cap this distance is r and this is dr whose direction is along r cap so in other words vector dr is r cap dr so we can write so this is an extremely important result and we have expressed the directional derivative in terms of gradient and therefore we can write the component of grad psi along r cap directional derivative of psi along r cap and clearly this is considered in the psi field it also follows from this result that d psi is grad psi dot dr r hat now this is an extremely important result which will be used in various places now the direction of grad psi let grad psi be written as follows so this is the magnitude of grad psi or the modulus of grad psi and this is the direction of grad psi 
we will find the direction n cap so the problem is actually to find n cap now the directional derivative of psi along r hat is grad psi dot r hat and let us use this result and let this be cos theta where theta is the angle between the unit vectors n hat n hat and r hat now in this relation it has to be remembered that what is n hat n hat is the direction of grad psi which we do not know and what is r hat r hat is the radial unit vector so it is any direction it can be along this direction or this direction or any other direction so r cap is an arbitrary unit vector so it is arbitrary it can be taken in any direction we note another thing in a region of space say so this is x axis this is y axis and this is z axis and this is the origin and in this region x y z varies even if x varies we can still identify surfaces on which x is constant or on which say y is constant or z is constant for instance on the x y plane z is constant in the y z plane x is constant and so on so this is x equal to constant region on this plane or surface x is constant Now psi is a scalar function of x, y, z. Since x, y, z varies, psi also varies. And in this region where psi is defined, we can therefore identify surfaces on which psi is constant. Similar to the case where we have been able to identify surfaces upon which x is constant. So in this region, we can identify surfaces on which psi is constant. If we draw all such surfaces, one surface will be passing through O. So let us draw it afresh. So suppose this is point O and this is psi equal to constant surface. So let us start our discussion from here. So this is psi equal to constant surface and all directions from this point O can be denoted by R cap. So this direction R cap is the tangent to this surface. So in the psi field, we have identified psi equal to constant surface and we are considering a surface that passes through the origin and this tangential direction is taken to be R cap because R cap is the radial unit vector which is arbitrary. We can take it in any direction. Suppose we take it tangential to this psi equal to constant surface. If one moves along the psi equal to constant surface, then what should be the value of d psi dr? Obviously, since psi is constant on the surface, the directional derivative of psi along r cap will be 0. So we have from here,
Now since mod grad psi is non-zero, it follows that cosine of theta equal to zero, which again means that the value of theta is 90 degrees. Now theta is the angle between n cap and r cap. So let us get back to this diagram. We are now in a position to draw n cap. n cap should be 90 degrees to r cap and therefore this is n hat. And n hat represents the direction of grad psi. So we have proved that the direction of grad psi is perpendicular to psi equal to constant surface. So let us write it down. So grad psi is such a vector that the direction of grad psi is perpendicular to psi equal to constant surface. In other words, if this is a surface on which psi is constant, then this will be the direction of grad psi. And we may call it n hat, which is normal to or perpendicular to psi equal to constant surface. Let us next find the magnitude of grad psi. That is to find modulus of grad psi. Let us recall the directional derivative of psi along r cap. A relation which we got just now and here what is theta theta is the angle between the direction of grad psi and arbitrary direction r hat to find the value of modulus of grad psi we have to choose theta in such a way that cos theta is not there in other words cos theta is 1 so if cos theta is unity that is theta equal to 0 then we have d psi dr because theta equal to 0 means n cap is parallel to r hat so now r cap is no longer arbitrary but it is oriented along n cap now putting n for r, we have so we have obtained the magnitude of grad psi and we'll explain it. Suppose this is psi equal to constant surface. and consider a point upon it and the normal to the surface is n hat which is the direction of grad psi. And due to this relation now the arbitrary vector is taken along n cap. So this is actually theta equal to 0 line. So it is now clear what modulus of grad psi stands for. So modulus of grad psi represents the rate of change of psi along the normal. So we can write it as rate of change of psi 
along normal to cycle to constant surface in other words this is the directional derivative along n hat so this is the directional derivative of psi along n cap. In our discussion, we have come across two directional derivatives. One is d psi dr and the other one is d psi dn. Let us try to interrelate them and the interrelation is extremely easy because d psi dr is mod grad psi cos theta and mod grad psi is d psi dn. Therefore, we can write d psi dr equal to, instead of mod grad psi, let us write d psi dn into cosine theta. So, this is how the two directional derivatives are interrelated and cos theta equal to d psi dr by d psi dn and what is cos theta? This is psi equal to constant surface this is the normal which is the direction of grad psi and r cap is any direction any arbitrary direction and this is the angle between n cap and r cap. Now since cos theta is less than or equal to 1, so what we have is this thing. So we can write d psi dr less than or equal to d psi dn. So this relation tells us that the directional derivative along n cap that is along the normal to cycle to constant surface is maximum. The directional derivative of psi along any other direction is less than the directional derivative of psi along the normal. So d psi dn is maximum. This is very clear. It is greater than the directional derivative along any other direction. So maximum space rate of change of psi. In other words, d psi dn is the maximum directional derivative.